Name, address, occupation. My name is Nick Robson. I live at 41 Castle Street and I'm presently unemployed. It was Wednesday night and I went into Taylor's Ridge to have a drink. I used to work in there and I'd always have a drink on Wednesday nights. It was my way of ending the week. I'd catch up with my friends, we'd have a drink, maybe something to eat at the bar, and then we'd go home. I lost my job like a lot of us around here and it's just something that we keep up. Anyway, I stayed later than usual that night. Wasn't feeling too good. Trouble at home. My wife and I haven't been getting on too well. Getting in each other's way a bit. So I decided to stay later than usual that night. I was late. Must have been, I don't know, around midnight. And I was driving along the river road when I saw a woman standing by a phone box waving me down. So I pull over, though I don't really want to. I want to get home because it's late. My wife would be worried. But what could I do? It's late and this woman's standing by a phone box on her own. It's late for her to be alone on a road by herself. So I pull over, she opens the passenger door and she says, my car is broken down. So I say, get in, I'll take you back to your car. But she says, no, can you drive me home? It's late, my husband will be waiting or something like that. Turns out she lives in one of the river houses. You know, there's a strip of rib houses down there by the river and she and her husband work in the city. And what does she call it? Commute. They commute between there and the city where they work. So I say, all right, I'll drive you home. Though I don't really want to. I want to get home because it's late. And I know my wife will be wondering where I am. And she probably would have phoned the hotel and found out that I left a while ago. So she'd be worried, thinking I've had an accident or something. But what could I do? It's late and the woman's in trouble. So she gets in and she says, thank you. We'd been driving for about 10 minutes and a woman hasn't said much except, I appreciate this, really I do. When I turn off the main road onto Bullish Track, which everybody knows is a shortcut down to the river houses, you don't have to go through town that way. It cuts at least 10 minutes off the journey. Everyone who lives around here knows it, except her. She doesn't know it because she and her husband have only been here a couple of months. And nobody must have told them about the shortcut down Bullis track. So she turns and looks at me and before I can say this is a short way, She's opened the door and jumped out. So I pull over, I get out of the car. I yell, wait, it's dark. I can't see her, she's running through the bush. So I run after her. It's dark so I can't see and I trip. And that's how I got those scratches on my face. I fell while I was chasing her and some sticks or rocks or something must've cut my face. I can still hear her running. She must be getting cut to shreds. So I yell, stop. I'm yelling, stop. This is the short way. I don't want to hurt you. And I don't hear her running anymore. But I can hear her breathing. I can't see her, but I know she's there because I can hear her breathing. She's quite close. And her breathing, sounds like she's crying. Like she's some 
terrified little forest animal. Now, I know she's scared. I can understand that. It's late, and I'm a stranger to her. And I've turned off onto a road that she doesn't know. So I can understand a woman is afraid. So I say, listen, don't be scared. This is the short way. Trust me. And then it's quiet. Like she's trying to decide. And then I hear it. I can't. Followed by the crashing through the bush. She's running again. I'm standing in the bush. It's pitch dark and it's late. And I'm thinking, how did this happen? I just wanted to help the woman. Then I thought, there's nothing more I can do. She just have to find her own way home. So I make my way back to the car. And as I'm driving, I'm thinking, what am I going to say to my wife? How is this going to look? What am I going to say about the cuts on my face and the mud on my pants? And then I start getting angry at the woman because I think she's caused me a lot of trouble. <laughs> I get home and I pull into the drive and I notice something on the floor of the passenger side and when I look closer, I see it's a shoe. The woman has left her shoe in my car. I think, how is this gonna look? What am I gonna say to my wife for the life of me? I don't know how I'm gonna explain all this to her. So I take the shoe and I, I walk across the road to where there's this vacant block. You know, it's just a block of bush backing onto the forest. And I'm not thinking too clearly now, just that there's this woman's shoe that I don't want and that I shouldn't have. So I throw that shoe as far as I can into that bush because I don't want it. And I, and I know it can lead to a, a lot of trouble for me. <laughs> So I just want to get rid of it. When I turn around and I see my neighbor standing at our lounge room window in her nightgown watching me and I think, shit, how is this gonna look? Me throwing a woman's shoe into the bush. Then she comes out of her house and what business she's got coming out of her house when it's so late, I don't know. I've hardly spoken to the woman before. Just nodded occasionally, like a good neighbor. But now, on this particular night, she decides to come out of her house. And she sees me there. And she's looking at me as though she wants an explanation. And I'm thinking, I don't know her a thing, but... I remember my face is cut to pieces. And I think it must look strange to her. <laughs> so I just laugh and think she probably didn't see. I mean, she saw me throw something, but she probably didn't see what it was. So I say, I just found a dog's bone on my lawn. And I know they've got a dog, so I say, can you keep the bones off my lawn? My kids tread on them. And she says, yes, I will. I'm sorry. And goes back inside. So I go inside. And I'm thinking, how am I going to explain this to my wife? And for the life of me, I don't know how I'm gonna explain all of this. But the thing is, the wonderful thing is, she's asleep. So I don't have to explain any of it. But as I'm getting ready for bed, I'm also feeling disappointed. <laughs> I think 
because I wanted her to be worried about me. And she wasn't. She was just sleeping like a baby. So I get into bed. And as I'm laying there, I'm thinking about all that has happened that night. When I think about that woman and how I left her out there. I want to see my wife now. I want to see my wife. 